People who work in driver education know the sobering truth. The number one cause of death in young people is traffic crashes. And as young people learn to drive, uh, we're really equipping them for the most dangerous thing that they're going to be doing for the rest of their lives. Between 2008 and 2013, the number of traffic fatalities in Washington went down each year. But it's been going up nearly every year since. It's a disturbing trend for the state's Target Zero campaign, a strategic plan aimed at reducing traffic fatalities to zero by the year 2030. I think there's been a belief that we're doing a great job. And in some instances, we have been. But we're not getting closer to target zero. In fact, we're getting farther away. So something's going wrong. And if we refuse to look at that, it's going to keep going in the wrong direction. The top three contributing factors for fatal crashes involving young drivers, speeding, impairment, and distraction. So these are all attitudes and behaviors. These are choices that we're making. It doesn't have to do with whether you learned how to turn left or turn right or park next to a curb. It has to do with higher levels of choices that people are making. So something needs to shift in how we've been doing our training. So work's been being done on the curriculum for many years uh, to make sure that we're addressing the, the biggest problems on our roadways. And this new curriculum is a step beyond that because what it is is getting into the heads of drivers in a different way. A different way with hopes of changing the big picture. When ranking traffic fatalities among the top 20 wealthiest developed countries, the U.S. ranks dead last. Driver training in the United States really hasn't changed much in the last 50 years, uh, and that includes Washington. We, we, uh, we have, are very mechanical in how we teach driving. We have to do better in Washington State. In 2017, state lawmakers took action aimed at doing it better. Legislation passed resulting in the new required curriculum for all driver training schools, public and private. Of course, the required curriculum still focuses on the rules of the road, driving maneuvers, and safety. But there's a new approach emerging at the heart of all of that learning. How we feel behind the wheel. How our attitudes and beliefs affect our decisions when driving. And not only about how those decisions affect us, but all of those other people in traffic too. That is probably the number one thing is that attitude behind the wheel. Attitude is huge in, in my opinion when it comes to getting behind the wheel. Who is the person behind the wheel? How are their attitudes and behaviors and values and views of themselves and others on the road affecting their decisions? So that's a piece that's been previously unexplored that we're now looking into. If you're late for work, heavy traffic, we've, we've all been there. Frustrating, but um, kind of that reflection or self-checking before you plan your day or before you're gonna go on a trip or before you're gonna get in the car to work, and it will have to be probably a daily thing that you do, um, maybe pre-check your vehicle, is a good way to kind of also check your attitude before you get into the car. We're just going to be a little bit more systematic about how we train drivers and how we um, help them to see themselves as a, as a whole person and that they're bringing themselves into that driver's seat and how can they kind of face how they make those decisions and learn to do some self-assessment in that process. Examples of self-reflection questions appear at the end of each section of the required curriculum allowing students to start forming a good habit, assessing their own driving behavior and attitude. Questions such as, does my driving make passengers nervous? What are my triggers and stressors? And am I driving in a way that I want others around me to drive? That self-reflection piece is, is a lot to ask of a young person. We get that. Uh, but no better time to start because they've been watching their parents and other adults drive for a long time and there's no doubt been some emotion involved in that driving. So I think a reset uh, or a, uh, an example or discussion about a different way to do it and to just have that moment of I'm choosing to behave this way. It needs to be a culture change. We can't just, people don't have, it's not a right to go out onto the road. People need to earn that right. Absolutely, right. And, and think about it, I mean, you know, we, there's a lot more traffic on the roadways right now. So that awareness is so much more important now, I would say, than, than ever before. The required curriculum identifies the knowledge, skills, and behaviors that all students should have by the time they graduate from a driver training school. 
It includes 11 broad-ranging concept areas, and through it all, a stronger emphasis on decision-making and attitudes. I think this new driver curriculum is really trying to open that door uh, to the wider person, that this is really a whole, more of a holistic approach to how we teach driver education. Reading the curriculum, especially that introduction, is a great first step. I think it's, 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 it's due, and um, from a personal standpoint, if I can include it, I've got a 15-year-old that'll be driving soon as well, too, so it makes me happy to know that we're doing a little bit more to uh, pr just provide that little bit more to um, our young drivers. And, and again, hopefully everyone can learn from it as well, too. For more information about the required curriculum, please visit dol.wa.gov.